I'm working to buy food for my younger brother. Don't your parents take care of your brother? Asked Sophie. I wish we had parents, Nanaki said. Nanaki explained that her brother was ill and that she worked so she could feed him. But you're just a kid, Sophie said. There's a bunch of kids like me who work. We live in a special place. Would you like to see? Sophie nodded. Hi everyone, welcome to the Reading Den with Shen. And I am Shen. Today I'm going to read with you and your family a wonderful award-winning book called Children Who Dance in the Rain by author Susan Justice and illustrated by Lena Barty. And today I'm going to give a special shout out to the book because 100% of net proceeds from every fourth copy of this book go straight to helping underprivileged children worldwide through various charity organizations. Now let's begin. Sophie woke up tired. She didn't want to go to school. I don't see why I need to learn about the world anyway, she said. Sophie slumped downstairs. She ate her chocolate chip waffles, but left her fruit on the side as her favorite cartoons played on her tablet. She groaned and refused to take her vitamins. When Sophie stepped outside, she felt a sprinkle of rain. I'm not getting wet, Sophie declared. You gotta drive me, Mom. At school, Sophie learned that lotus flowers grow in mud. She also learned how to spell the word privilege. At lunch, Sophie scarfed down her grilled cheese sandwich, but left her carrots untouched. That afternoon, Sophie's mom told her, your dad and I are planning a trip to India for all of us to visit your grandmother. Really? Sophie gasped. I can't believe it'll be like a story. For weeks, Sophie eagerly awaited their trip. But when they reached her grandmother's home in the village, she was shocked to see how different it was from home. The bathroom was dirty. Lizards were crawling around on the bedroom walls. They didn't have pizza. And often there was no electricity or internet for her tablet. Do we have to stay here? Sophie asked her parents. Can't we go someplace nice? Where else will you see these mystical creatures roaming around freely? Sophie sulking was interrupted by a girl who was carrying plastic in bags. Hi, I'm the Naki Kaur, said the girl smiling. Why do you have so much trash? Sophie asked. To her surprise, the girl grinned. I'm working to buy food for my younger brother. Don't your parents take care of your brother? Asked Sophie. I wish we had parents, Nanaki said. Nanaki explained that her brother was ill and that she worked so she could feed him. But you're just a kid, Sophie said. There's a bunch of kids like me who work. We live in a special place. Would you like to see? Sophie nodded. She followed Nanaki through long, swirling alleys and around markets displaying delightful treats and toys. I live with many other children like me, said Nanaki. We don't have money to buy anything, but we love to visit the market and imagine the wonderful things we'll have when we grow up. Don't you all get bored? asked Sophie, wondering how the children played without any toys. Nanaki explained that, although the children had no toys, during the shadowy nights they played in the stars. They were friends of the moon. Finally, they reached Nanaki's home, a house made of mud. Many children lived in the mud colony. Some were washing their ragged clothes in a polluted pond, while others practiced writing in the dirt with sticks. This is where you live? Sophie asked nervously. Nanaki smiled. Yes, at times it's hard, but when I close my eyes, I can feel the divine is here, in the sky, in the mud, inside us. Sophie didn't understand what Nanaki meant. Why don't you go to school? Sophie asked. I hope to someday, Nanaki said, but if I work hard now, I will be able to buy the food and vitamins my brother needs. A wave of guilt washed over Sophie as she thought of the food she often left on her plate and the vitamins she complained about taking. That food could really help the children here. We were saving this juice box for special occasion, Nanaki said as her tummy grumbled. I think it was meant for you. Sophie was amazed by Nanaki's kindness and generosity. 
Suddenly the sky roared and the rain poured throughout the colony, serenading the neighborhood. The barefoot children rushed to the music, cheering and dancing in the rain. Their mud homes were empty, but their hearts were filled with joy. Leaving her worries behind, Nanaki grabbed Sophie to join in the magical moment as they danced in a pool of mud. As she twirled happily with the other children to melodies she had never heard before, Sophie felt the music lift her out of the mud. Her head turned up to the clouds and cold raindrops dripped down her face. Closing her eyes, Sophie felt warm butterflies fluttering in her stomach. She wanted to remember this beautiful feeling forever. Do you see? asked Nanaki looking at the sky. The following day, Sophie returned to the mud colony with her tablet. I want you to have this, she told Nanaki. You can play games and, and learn on it. Nanaki smiled and whispered, Can I trade this for my brother's medicine? Sophie nodded. Giving away one of her precious belongings made her feel strangely joyful inside. When Sophie returned from India, she felt different. Sophie had discovered that happiness doesn't come from having more things, but from being grateful for what you have and sharing it with others. Though she knew how to spell it, Sophie had never truly understood what the word privilege meant until she saw the differences between what she and other children had. She felt gratitude for being able to learn, and she ate the food on her plate, mindful that many children in the world were hungry. Years later, epilogue. Sophie went on with her life and thought of Nanaki every so often throughout the years. She studied hard, and when things were difficult or school was challenging, she remained grateful in her heart despite all circumstances. Sophie graduated from medical school and returned to the mud colony with a group of doctors. Together, they helped many underprivileged children who needed food and medicine. In the middle of the muddy pond in the colony, a lotus was blooming. Sophie remembered Nanaki's words and realized that the divine was actually something she could feel everywhere and in everything. She understood it was the magic of life itself, the divine. Perhaps if the mud colony was like a garden, then the children were the lotus flowers growing in the mud. I love this book. It had some powerful messages. To find out about other fabulous books, please subscribe. This is The Reading Den with Shen, and I'm Shen. I'll see you all in the new year. Bye, everyone.